Hello, lovely people, and welcome back to another episode of MMA from London to LA. This week, we're going to be speaking about the last UFC fight night card, the amazing announcement of France and Garnu signing with the PFL, and the special announcement, which came on the same day as France and Garnu's announcement that is UFC 291. I'd like to be joined by the returning Chris. Um, unfortunately, Colin won't be with us on this show, but he should be back next show as well. Chris, how are you doing? How... We missed you, man. We missed you. How are you doing? I know, mate. It's been a mad three weeks, mate. I had uh, my kid's <laughs> birthday, so we went to Pepper Pig World. You know what I mean? It was for the kid, not for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, have, uh, I can't remember this, the other one. I had a family thing or something. I can't remember. And then the other thing was um had my fight show, my first fight yeah. show. So, yeah, how mate. I had to do that. Go? Had yeah, man, it was great. Crowd was buzzing, mate. Everyone loved it. Had some big gyms like GB Top Team and people like that there, you know. So, really? yeah, mate, it's nice to see when you have people like Nathaniel Wood messaging you, messaging you, asking you for tickets and shit, man. So, Brilliant. yeah, it felt good, Brilliant. man. But made it all wow. worthwhile, you know. So, Quality. yeah, man. long may that continue, man. Long may that continue. Right, let's get into the scheduling, bro. Let's look at last night's fight card or the fight card that was on Sunday for whenever people watch this. Let's start with the first fight on the card, which was again. Another fantastic finish. You look at this card in comparison to the uh, the pay per view card, for example, and this is a completely different card. Diego Ferreira KOs Michael the Menace Johnson in round two. What did you think of it? And I think they said it was like the third person to ever do that to Michael Johnson to finish yeah. it generally. Yeah. And how long has he been around for? You know what I mean, I think he was in the Ultimate Fight uh, 12 or 13 or something like that. Something, yeah. Old school, man. Old school. Um, yeah, mate, so he's been in the UFC since, like, 2010, 2011. He's been yeah. around, mate. Um, I looked at it, yeah, he's 13 wins and 15 losses, but obviously 15 losses in the UFC, but that's 13 wins in the UFC as well. Do you know what I mean? So can't yeah. take nothing away from Michael Johnson on that fight, one. he fights everyone. He fights everyone. Yeah, man. And do you know what, though? He's four and six in his last ten, like two and two in his last four, you know? So mm. you know what? He's he's still in there, mate. And he's one of the rare, one of the only people to actually – you know, give Khabib like something to think about, you know, as well. Yeah. When he fought Khabib. Yeah. So yeah, mate, big props to Michael Johnson. And a lot of fighters always say he's actually one of the hardest person people that's hit him. You know what I mean? Yeah. They've had like the hardest power they've had from any other fighter. Yeah. But yeah, mate, what a fight, both veterans, man. Quality so, yeah. fight. The finish, the finish was just it literally came out of nowhere. It was a brilliant shot. And Michael Johnson, he dropped that left hand. And I think the last person to do that to him was Josh Emmett. Um but it, sure. it was just a phenomenal knockout. And look, Diego Ferreira, he needed that. He needed that win. He was in desperate need and, and he got it. I think both fighters are safe. Obviously, Ferreira, Ferreira just got a fantastic knockout. I don't think the UFC is going to close the door on Michael Johnson. I think he will come again. He's always in exciting fights. He always is always game. Never turns down a fight from what I hear. So long may that continue. And I don't think he needs to, to go anywhere. No, he's two and two in his last four, so he's still hanging yeah. in there, people, mate, and stuff. Yeah. He's not like he's getting beaten, like, and massive yeah. losing streaks and stuff, so he can give yeah, it as good yeah. as he takes sort of thing. But Diego Ferreira, mate, his back was a bit against the wall, though. Yeah. You know, he's on a free fight skid, and imagine being on a free fight skid and offering your, your back to the wall fight against Michael Johnson. That's <laughs> 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 like, you trying it's to get like rid of him? out for a minute. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you paying me too much or something? You're trying to get yeah. rid of me and cut, <laughs> cut, cut your costs a little bit, but... Mate, he's 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 what nine and five in the UFC as well, man. Yeah. I mean, so he's got a good break. He's been around since like 2014 as well. So yeah, yeah mate, vet, veterans, man. I love these fight cards, man, because every now and then you get yeah. like a proper people used to be on the main card, you know, but they're fighting on the prelims, but they're fighting legends, fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great to see. It's not great to see sometimes, but yeah, man, we're seeing a lot of people retiring recently. So I can say, yeah, this was a good one. This really was a good one. The next fight on the card was again another great fight um andre fialo um versus joaquin buckley who's making his welterweight debut and joaquin buckley shut him out with a head kick knockout yeah, again joaquin buckley is the highlight reel that keeps on giving highlights whether it is him doing the knocking out or him being knocked out if he loses he goes out on his shield but this time he came out of a fantastic head shot to win what's your thoughts on joaquin buckley at welterweight Oh, mate, he didn't he look solid, mate? You could tell that he had more gas in the tank as well. Yes. And his power was a lot better. Mate, doesn't he remind you of, like, Tyson? Someone like that, the way yes. he just stalks yeah, in. Yeah, I've always said that, yeah. Stalks it in, and he's just... He's, he's a menace. And the way he hit... I remember there was a 
Billio, he blocked the shot, but you heard the impact because obviously the apex, you can hear everything, can't you? Yeah, yeah. And then when he hit him and he blocked it, I was like, mate, you felt that as well. Yeah, and what I love about Buckley was he wasn't winning that fight at, at times, you know what I mean? But mm. he was getting picked apart. He got caught big time. He's got a solid chip. Yeah. But he was yeah, leaving himself yeah. open, just winging it. And he won't be able to do that against like top five, top 10 opponents, you know what I mean? He won't be able yeah. to be like that. He will get caught, you know. And um, But he's an exciting fighter. He made his own fame with his obviously spinning kick. Well, whatever yeah. you want to call that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man, I thought he did really well against someone like Andre Filio, but he's having a hard time in the UFC. You know, he's like mm-hmm. two and four. You know, he's having a tough one. and But I think he showed today that he's still got what he takes and it'd be interesting to see him come back, you know. He's fought everywhere, man, that guy. PFL, Bellator, Dubai, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's, he's he knows what he's doing, you know. But, yeah, I'm glad Buckley's doing well. Watched his last podcast with Joe Rogan and he sounds like a fishy guy, man. Yeah, uh, uh, there was a lot of people coming out like when he first blew up saying how he's not a great guy and all this, but he seems to have put those those things to bed now. And you see, I don't know if he maybe changed and he used to be like that and he's changed now, but I, I've I've watched some of his stuff and he, he does seem like a pretty cool guy. But again, we're looking from the outside in, so yeah, no, it's hard to say. It. But from what I see, he seems like a, a decent guy. Who would you like to see him potentially fight next to World away? Just for oh, a bit of fun. mate. That's the thing. It's like asking what your favourite film is. You know, <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't even think of it off the top of my head. To be honest with you, uh, who would you choose? Do you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing him against someone like an Ian Gary. I know Ian, go, Gary, Ian Gary would be fighting backwards because obviously Ian Gary's now in the top fifteen, isn't he? Yeah, but he'll pick but him I apart, mean, mate. Gary will pick him apart, mate. Do you think so? But he probably would. What... He probably would. But I think it would bring the best out of Gary as well because Buckley's not the type to just stand around and and wait and take pictures. He's going to fight fire with fire, and I think that's where you might see Ian Gary as best. You'll see him tested, but you'll also see him potentially take his shot selection and his. And his and his range of striking to a new level potentially as well. Yeah, man, I agree. But yeah, there's more to see from Buckley for sure. But yeah, you look back yeah. at that and think you'll think, geez, I got lucky a couple of times there. He could really clip me and yeah. But yeah, he did what he did, mate, you know. And Taylor yeah. White loves them sort of fighters and doesn't everyone, yeah. you know. He, he keeps winning bonus checks, mate. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. So can't take that away from him. Yep, it's not a coincidence either. The next fight was Emily Ducote versus Lou Peter or Lou P. Godinez. Um Again, it was Loopy, uh, wasn't it? I thought yeah, I was seeing yeah, things and they wrote no, no. <laughs> I mean, that's a, I think that's just like a nickname. Like, my, my name's Callum, but loads of people, well, all my friends call me Cow. So it's just probably just like a little different way of, of saying her name. Um, obviously, Loopy means another thing in this country. <laughs> so, when you see the word Loopy, you're thinking, oh, hold on, what's going on there? Are they taking the mick? But, um, <laughs> no, she she put on a really good performance and won that, in my opinion, pretty handily. Don't know about you. No, man, well, she'd come on on... Um, well, first of all, those Brazilian women, mate, are scary, aren't they? You know they what I mean? They all are. They, 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 they all, all they, are. They've all got... I don't say none of the other girls have got good hands, but they all have good hands, those girls mm. from Brazil, mate. They all have that Amanda Nunes, like, the speed. Because we haven't... Yeah. Since Nunes, you know, Nunes really showed what women could do in the boxing sort of thing. You know, same with Holly Holm and stuff. Cyborg but, as well, to be fair. Oh, yeah, Cyborg, to be fair as well. But, you know, like, there's a lot of... When women fights first came into the UFC... You saw a lot of grappling fights. A lot of it was groundwork, a lot of it was ground, very good groundwork and grappling. But now we're seeing hands getting thrown, you're getting seeing women getting knocked out more often now in the fights. You know, people like Molly McCann coming in and doing her thing. So yeah, yeah. mate. And um she came in and did exactly that. And as soon as that fight started, I thought she's um this is gonna be over really quick. But fair play to Emily, how'd you say her name? Ducote or Ducote, yeah, man. She um yeah, mate, fair play to her, you know. <laughs> she she stood there and she took it. And she fought back and she, you know, she was doing the right at times, but she was getting outstruck, yeah. you know. And um, what's interesting is that they both lost to Angela Hill as well. I know we'll yeah. come on to that later, but they both yeah. lost to Angela Hill as well. So that just shows how tough she really is before we, yeah. you know, get, get ahead of ourselves as the main event. But um, yeah. yeah, mate, great win for Lupita. Short, short notice fight. And yeah, yeah mate, she's four and one in the last five, mate. So Dude, yeah, well, mate, big things. Up. That was a catch weight as well. So both women did really well there. And uh, next fight, which was a co main event, uh, Edmund Shabazian versus Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Great, that's the best nickname, isn't it? Best nickname going, absolute apart, best nickname. Apart and he's from far Andre from fluffy and soft, isn't he? Like, <laughs> he like... oh, yeah, that gives my size of that guy as well, man. Oh, he's yeah. just a monster, man. And, um, yeah, mate, he's smashing it up in the UFC, man. I'm pretty sure he's won his last four fights, including this one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So. 
yeah, mate, great fight from him. Um, and you know what? This guy's gonna have it easy. Like his third fight in the UFC, he fought like Kevin Holland, man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He didn't win it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he fought Kevin Holland, so he's fought the best already. But Edmund Shabazia, man, you know, veteran man. Both both these fighters from the contender series, you know what I mean? But yeah. Edmund's been having a bad time, man. He yeah. has. It just seems as though I look, I'm not a fighter, so I I, I hate even saying this because I've never been in a cage and fought someone. But it seems as though he's one of those fighters. When it's going right, he's phenomenal. But the moment he starts to feel a bit of adversity, he just he seems to almost go into a show and his his gas tank just completely depletes. Like after that first round, he looked he looked like he was ready to go. And I don't know if that's a mental thing, if that's a physical thing, but that something needs tweaking there because I don't want to see him get hurt in the cage and against these guys in the UFC, especially at weight class, you're leaving yourself really in the line of fire if you're not fully prepared. And he started the first round really well, but the moment Anthony started getting into it, it, it the, the momentum shifted and it shifted really quick and Edmund couldn't get the momentum back at all. Right. And it, it became, it became a beat down. Yeah, it did. It was, it was hard to watch at times, wasn't it? But yeah. do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not that. I'm never going to doubt the UFC's matchmaking. Sean Shelby's one of the best matchmakers in the world. You know, Mick Maynard. Yeah. This guy's like one and four in his last five. And this guy's yeah. like up and coming in football. So that, so actually, that just shows Edmund how he will fight anyone at any time. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And um, I'll give him that. You know, and obviously, I've actually, I take that back. Actually, I've matched fights which look like that before, and people like Edmund will come out on top. You know, yeah. so yeah. it must be. It's a tough job, mate. But yeah, fair play to Edmund. Um, he stepped up to the plate. If I got offered that fight when I'm in that sort of situation, you know, I probably wouldn't be accepting such a tough fight against an up and comer. It's a dangerous fight to accept. Yeah, completely agree. And the main event, Mackenzie Dern shuts out Angela Hill in a five rounder. Um, Mackenzie Dern keeps winning. I mean, yeah, just... doing what she's doing. She looked yeah. so. She looked like a completely different fighter in this fight. She came out of the traps and just went for Angela Hill. She landed a fantastic um, knee that just completely stunned Angela Hill. I think that was in the second round. The first yeah, round, yeah. I think she dropped her of a punch. But she just went after Angela. It's almost as though it was a street fight where she was just like, I'm going to take your head off. I don't care who you are, what you are. And But obviously, she has fantastic technique, especially when it gets to the ground. And her ground game is is one of the best in, in women's MMA. And she proved it again. That's what you expect, don't you? You expect Mackenzie mm. Dern to look for the takedown. But someone like Angela Hill, again, is not a fun fight to take for anyone. Yeah. Again, a dangerous fight for Mackenzie to take. You know, she's had like, God, how many fights she had in the UFC? Jesus, like 20, over 20 fights Angela Hill's had fights in the UFC. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, fair play to Mackenzie Dern. And she's 30 years old now. She's, she's in her prime. Yeah, you know, and you can see that come through today as well against such a tough opponent, Angela Hill. Yeah. As we explained earlier, Angela beat um, Loopy, as she wants to call herself, and <laughs> Emily Ducote. You know, yeah. she beat those two very tough fighters. And um, yeah, mate, she's no walkover and fair play to her. Like, Angela, she's 38 years old, but she's still doing it, though, mate. And she yeah. didn't, she didn't outclass, didn't outmatch, you know, but Mackenzie did look good. She's that's probably the yeah. best I've seen Mackenzie doing look ever, yeah. you know, and um. Her stand up, mate. Wow. You know, she She's was really growing. And she, she looked big as well, mate. She looked like she yeah. really like, put some strength on. Well, that they alluded to that in the commentary. They said that Mackenzie Dern has put on some sizable um, muscle in, in the time off that she's had. And she said she knew the weight cut was going to be more difficult because of it, but she wanted to build up that strength. And you're right. Her and Angela looked like completely different weight classes in there. But I have to credit Angela Hill as well. There were times in there where she could have completely just given up, like, there was twice at the end of the first and I think at the end of the at the second or third round, maybe the third round, where Mackenzie could have got the arm bar and she did absolutely everything not to break the grip, whether it was use the defense of putting her hand in between her legs or having the grip. And I've, I've sparred and been in that situation where someone's about to take your arm and a lot of the time you're powerless to do anything. For her to get through those two situations against Mackenzie... Just shows the heart that Angela Hill has it. And she is a fun fight for anyone she fights. She always brings the fight. She never is, or should I say, is rarely in a boring fight. And again, at 38 years old, yeah, she probably hasn't got title implications or anything, but she is still 
a very, very capable fighter and, and a good fighter for some of these younger up and coming fighters to, to test themselves against. Yeah, mate, definitely. That's definitely not a fight you'll be taking too, you know, too easily. You know? yeah. But if you want something to prove, then you beat that sort of fighter. The gatekeeper, as they call them, which I'm sure she wouldn't want to be called as, you know. But <laughs> yeah. uh, So in terms of the night, then, who would you say had the best finish? Would you say it was Buckley or P Ferreira? Oh, did I, say, I swear I saw, I know I spoke about it, but I'm sure I saw another one on the prelims, which was brutal as well. Oh, I can't remember. But I think Ferreira takes it, to be fair. That was like proper Ferreira, up, up, yeah. up, 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 arms to the side. See you later, you know. Yeah, down, you know. Sleeper, to be fair. It was an absolute yeah. sleeper. Um, and then performance of the night. Who would you oh, have? Mackenzie Dern, all day yeah. long. I don't think anyone can... Obviously, there were lots and lots of good performances that night, but Mackenzie Dern looked good, man. There were some yeah. good fights in the prelims as well, mate, you know, but... Yeah, a but very good fight night. Like. Yeah, mate, it was for... Yeah, because a lot of people slate them because... You know, you've got some guys who had like nine fights or like six and yeah. three or four and one. And but you know what? These are the these are the next best thing, you know, and that's yeah. what's good. I've said it before on the podcast we've done. It's good that UFC do all these smaller shows because they can't be making loads of money out of it, you know, yeah. but they're giving people the opportunity to fight and um, show yeah. what they can do on the bigger stage. You know what I mean? So Precisely. that's off them. Indeed, indeed. If you haven't already, please do smash the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, right. Last week. A massive announcement was make, made about a massive fire. Since his last fight in the UFC, which was a victory over Cyril Garn, he has left the UFC. He's been stripped of the heavyweight title. Cyril Garn has gone on to fight John Jones and lost for that heavyweight title. Everyone had written off Francis as making a mistake by leaving the UFC. Dana Wyatt had publicly spoken about him and said that he wasn't even going to make him an offer and the door's completely shut. John Jones has called him the P-word as, as well as other things. Um, I believe the owner of one championship um, said that they're not in the France Ngannou business. Bellator said they're not going to go anywhere near him. However, BKFC. Last, BKFC said no, not happening. And everyone was putting out tweets saying he's fumbled the bag, he's dropped the bag, and this, that, and the other about Francis. And then what does he do? He drops a bombshell. Signing with the PFL, not just signing with the PFL as an MMA fighter, he's going to have a minority stake in the organization. He's also going to be on the advisory board for PFL Africa. He's also allowed to fight in boxing, which is what he wanted. And he's guaranteed his opponent at least $2 million to fight him. Now, as a selfish fan, I want Ngarni versus John Jones. Who doesn't? Yeah, yeah well, that's never going to happen. It isn't now. It doesn't seem. Oh, well, it might happen in 10 years' time when they're both old and <laughs> yeah. come back and fight a better talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Chris, I want to ask you, what's your thoughts on France and Garnier signing with PFO and the deal that he's been able to generate here? I reckon that was the plan all along, to be honest with you. Gee. I reckon the whole... Yeah. I think he got offered... I think all the things that come out in the media, I don't think they, they approached him, or maybe they did approach him, but they... They just sent him an offer. It wasn't official tools and stuff because he knew he had PFL in the background. So I wonder what BKFC would offer me. You know, they might offer me this money. Or I wonder what this sort of company would offer me. But I think PFL, look what they did. They signed Jake Paul. You know, that's not going to be cheap, is it? Yes, you know, but you're signing a fighter in my eyes who's signed with you to have a boxing match, yeah, which he might not even have. Yeah, he's been had three fights in three years. Okay, I, 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 I don't see the business sense in it from their point of view, but. Hey, they've got loads of money, I'm sure. But when's Ngarni going to fight again, really? And then, do you know what? He's not going to fight any of the top people. They, why, isn't he, why isn't he already matched up with a champion of Bellator or heavyweight? And I love Ngarni, yeah, no, don't mean. get me wrong. I love that geezer, yeah. I, after, yeah. Hearing, after hearing his story of how he got here, how could you not? Yeah. Having, an, having his first MMA fight without even knowing the rules, you know, it's great. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, mate, it's just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. So apparently the first fight that he's going to have isn't actually going to be an MMA. It might actually be boxing. It potentially is going to be this year. Now, the opponent is unknown. You'd imagine it's going to be one of Joshua, Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury. Otherwise, it kind of doesn't make sense, in my opinion. And what here's about the Jake thing. Paul? No, Jake Paul is not that crazy. No. <laughs> no. Jake Paul would not live to see the second round in that fight. But here's the thing. 
and Garnu is brilliant as he is, and I'm like you, I'm a massive Engarnu fan. He isn't the biggest draw and the biggest name. He's not like a Conor McGregor who could have generated stupid money with, with a fight. And obviously, you have to have a dance partner in Mayweather. No one else generated money like Mayweather in boxing. Fury is a bit of a weird one because he's trying to call out everyone but not fight anyone. Joshua is in a point of his career whereby him taking a risk might be the worst thing for him at the moment, especially if he were to lose that fight against Ngannou. I think that scuppers everything for him. Deontay Wilder seems like the most viable choice. However, I think that is the most dangerous fight for Ngannou, though, because I think he can potentially hurt the other two. I don't think he beats Fury or Joshua in a boxing match, but I think he hurts them potentially. Wilder, I think he gets hurt. Do you expect to see him box one of these three guys? And if so, do you expect to see it before the end of the year? I doubt it before the end of the year. I doubt that very much. But he might do. We're in May now. I mean, a September, October fight potentially. Maybe, maybe like around, maybe like December in Abu Dhabi or something. Probably, you know, maybe, something yeah. like that. That that's what was happened, sort of thing. But can he even go twelve rounds? I wonder. You know what I mean? He struggles with cardio in the cage sometimes. You know, but yeah. that's the thing. You know, but um. Yeah, he won't fight Joshua. Joshua won't fight anyone. I can't stand Joshua anyway. Um, I'm, just... I'm a big Joshua fan. I can't lie. <laughs> no, uh, not, 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 I never really have been, to be fair. I thought it is... Anyway, I'm sure he's a lovely bloke in real life, but what he comes across on the telly is yeah, not my cup of tea. Tyson Fury, <laughs> Tyson Fury is definitely a fight that could happen. I think that is the more likely one to happen. I don't think he'll fight Deontay. Cause that's too dangerous for him. He'll probably fight like Andy, Ru Andy Ruiz or someone like that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Even I I mean, know, like, I or even anyone that tough, I reckon he'll probably just fight some YouTuber or something like that. Some, I, some, some, some like, maybe take the Jake Paul path. But Ngannou in his defense, right? Ever since day one, he wanted to be a boxer. He didn't want to yeah. be an MMA fighter. He wanted to do boxing. He wanted yeah. to be a boxer. That's why he came across all the all the barbed wire he was talking about and getting in boats and sailing across all sorts, of, all sorts of open water. You know, he said, "I'm coming to be a boxer. That's what I want to do." Just yeah. fell into MMA, you know, and you could tell that with him as well. He was just knocking people out. Garnet was the first fight you saw him wrestle someone. Yeah. And John Jones would have decimated him, mate. There's no there's no if buts and maybe he's bad. Mm, you know what I mean? I he would have done he would, he would have I done exactly know. the same thing that he'd done to Garnet. Exactly Do you honestly think? Thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. don't know. 100 percent No, he wouldn't yeah, what's he got? He's he's just like Roy Nelson. I love Roy Nelson, but oh, it's just a one shot wonder. <laughs> No, Do you know what I mean, no, mate. I think Ngarni poses threats for John Jones. I don't think he beats John, but I don't think John rank rank holds him. No, well, I reckon he takes him straight down and just guillotines him. I, Same as I, think Jones, I think John Jones wins that fight either in the fourth or it goes to the decision. I don't think he rank holds him. We'll talk about it when they're in their late 40s when they finally yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, here's the thing this is what I wanted to ask you. This is a bit of a fun question. Dana White has openly said he thinks John Jones ragdolls Francis Ngarni, and Francis knows that as well. Now, UFC aren't into doing the cross promotional stuff. But if you really wanted to kill your competition and you really believe what you're saying, would you not do one cross promotional fight? John Jones versus Francis Ngarni, UFC versus PFL. Not only does that legitimise John Jones as the best heavyweight without any sort of argument? That also legitimises the UFC as the best place for talent and it also completely destroys the PFL situation as well as what France Ngannou's done in terms of taking some of the limelight away from the UFC. But would you it, take it, that risk? And you're a matchmaker yourself. Yeah, would you take would that never, risk? Mm, no. <laughs> you wouldn't. You know I mean? you... <laughs> no, Not even if you had a John Jones. Uh, I'd have to get someone else to fight John Jones. You bring enough money in. <laughs> no, mate. No, mate. Um, if they did a UFC versus PFL, mate, right? UFC would destroy them, mate. Okay, like bloody hell. That PFL's title holder was Myson Tabura, mate. Okay, and he was destroying everyone. Yuri yeah. Prashavka, well, I can never say his certain name, beat like yeah, their right. best guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like. You know what I mean? He's like one of their champions and at light heavyweight, I think that was, or even middle, I can't remember. But yeah, yeah. man. So yeah, they, they destroy I, you know what I'd like to see is a fun one. I'd like to see them fight one championship. Like make that, right? I don't think they would ever do that. No, Actually, I'll tell you why. The fighters at one, they're unknown to the Western world, but they are yeah. absolute killers over there. Oh, I love one, mate. Yeah, mate. But things like if they did some of them 
like I guess I guess the problem is over there. I guess is that their their stand up is phenomenal, but their obviously their takedown the wrestling yeah. isn't as good. Yeah, that, that's the yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, but um, do some of them hybrid ones again, like they did with Mighty Mouse, you know? Yeah, like, with you know Rod Tang. Boys. Yeah, mate. Imagine Rod Tang fighting someone like, like I don't know, like Aljamain Sterling, you know, like Muay Thai oh. fight. <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty. I think Rod Tang would get Aljo out there in the first round to be. Like, Rod Tang would beat everyone up, mate. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He, you'd hit him with a bit of wood in the head and he'd shake it off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. But yeah, so with the cross promotion thing, um, yeah, it makes sense. But also, Dana White won't ever have anything to do with Francis and Garnu again. You know, I thought he's got enough money. He doesn't need to what, make a few more. Nah, whatever. He can make big fights with other people now. And um, I think that's actually for sales. But let's be real. If John Jones beats Stipe, which I think many people think he will, he's he'll gone, retire. in my opinion. Yeah, he'll retire. So what happens to the heavyweight division? And here's the thing. From a purist standpoint, you and I both know the heavyweight division is very good right now. Jartan Almeida, Pavlovich, Aspinall, yeah. Curtis Blades is still about. Like, Tui Vass is still there. Like, that division is hot, but the name what, value yeah. isn't there. I want to see. I want to see Jones fight Pavlovich, mate, before he retires. I'd love to see that fight. I don't think he will. No, he'll retire after this fight, and then we won't see him for three or four years, or maybe even like two years. And the next thing you know, PFL will offer him hundreds of millions to go fight and Garnu on their show, and that's the only way that's ever going to happen. And then we'll all watch it. You know, I never, I never watch boxing. I'm not, I'm not. I only know the main events of boxing, but I paid for McGregor versus Buddy Mayweather. You know, I watched all that. We all did. We all watched it, didn't we? We all watched it. So. Really yeah, did. man. Um, yeah, I want it to happen, but I'm just being realistic. I don't think it will. Yeah, it's just. I think I think that both UFC UFC sharing their profits with the PFL, giving them exposure. I don't think Dana White's in that game for the sake of chasing and Garnu. It's just not Dana White's way, is it? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I hear you. I'm just. Don't be, to I don't mean to dampen your spirits, sir. I know. I just. I just. I just. I'm a fan at the end of the day. I just want. I, I'm selfish, man. I just want. I want to see that fight so bad. Yeah, I think the Jones... fight that's going to go down in history is the fight that never was. It's like we, yeah. we got so close with Fedor and some of the UFC fighters. It's going to feel like that with this one. And look, for right, Dana man. White saying now, like he was saying everything he's saying about Ngani a couple of years ago, he was saying about John Jones. So he is a promoter at the end of the day. He's going to promote his product and he's going to put his, his business first. But I do think us fans need to take what he says sometimes a pinch of salt and understand he is doing what he has to do to protect which is his number one project, and that is UFC. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Man. I hear it. I hear it. Right now that you've just uh, stamped on my parade and and ended my uh, fight fantasy, let's look at the um, the announcement that was made, coincidentally or not so coincidentally, <laughs> around the time of Ngannou making his announcement, and that is Dana White announcing the card for UFC 291. So I'm going to go through the fights that have been announced so far. At welterweight, we've got Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland. Great fight. Oh. At heavyweight, we've got Derek Lewis versus Marcos Rodrigo de Lima, who's recently came off a fight and a win. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson at welterweight going against Michelle Pereira. Oh, imagine the at spinning attacks of that fight. That's a crazy <laughs> fight. At middleweight, Paolo Costa versus Ikram Aliskrov. Not... Hamzat Chemaev will speak about him. A lightweight legend bout, Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green. A light heavyweight bout with title implications right off the bat. Jan Blachowicz, the former champion, going up against the former middleweight champion, moving up in Alex Pereira. And then for the BMF title, it's part two. Dustin the Diamond Poirier against the highlight. Justin Gaethje. What a card that is. Yeah, right. It's mental, isn't it? The breaking now, records that night. Grant, there's, not, and there's only one title card. It's the 27th, 29th of July. That's yeah. not even a fight week card. So that's the 29th of July. Now, granted, we are a little way from there. We're two months out. A lot can change on a fight card in two months. Injuries, Anything can happen. Obviously, we hope the card stays together, but you never know. But as things stand right now, I'm going to say ignore the main event because we all know the main event is just a, a bona fide barn burner. Which other fight on the card are you mainly looking forward to apart from the main event? 
Oh, there's so many, mate. I was just having a little flick through now it's of some of them. Crazy. But Wonder Boy Thompson versus Pereira is literally going to be a ca- it's, a, it's just going to be a Capoeira fight, isn't it? Oh, it's you know what I mean, it's going to be amazing. I'm both. Oh, I've lost it now. Um, but I'm, I don't know, mate. Because then you've got Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green is like another legends fight. But yeah. I guess the one, not apart from the main fight, the one to get the most excited for, I reckon, is going to be the. Um, Everyone wants to see how Pereira is going to get on at light heavyweight, aren't we? That's what we want to see. We want to see Blavich how he's going to get on. Chest as well. And Blagovich is going to take him down. He's going to hold him down. Do you know what I mean? Just like he did to Adesanya. Yeah. You, <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, to... do you think he gets in close enough? Considering Pereira would have seen that fight, do you think he's able to just double leg or or pin up against a cage? Pereira's a He's he's way more imposing than Adesanya was. Remember, Adesanya came into that fight weighing what, like one ninety three or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Pereira's gonna be every bit of two hundred five on that. Yeah, on true. that scale, and then probably about two twenty, two twenty five. True, he's got to hold him down, isn't he? So, yeah, true. Yeah, okay, you get a fair play. They might but, be around um, the same size. It's experience, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's experience true. level. He knows, but things. Pereira's been in them fights with Adesanya, but again. He hasn't done, I'm pretty sure he hasn't done the five round yet, has he? So, not the full distance. No, he stopped, uh, is he in the first fight after fight, in the fifth round? And yeah, second round. Oh, it was the fifth round. Yeah, 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 of course it was. Yeah, yeah but he's not been so in the full yeah. five rounds. Yeah, no, no, but he pretty much has done it. So, yeah, so that's my bad. But what's mad to look on paper is that you got a number three rank to get as an unranked opponent. It's just if you look, if you yeah. weren't a fight fan, you looked at it, you're like, what is this? <laughs> what have they stitched this guy up for? But <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think uh, if Blackovich can, um, get through that first round and just get hold of him. He's just got to get hold of him, you know, pin yeah. up against the fence and just do his thing and wear him down. That's That would be my game plan anyway. So, yeah, it'd be a tough fight. But if I was betting on it, I would bet on Blackovich to win that fight for sure. Um, I'm 50-50 on it at the moment. Um, another fight we have to discuss is Paolo Costa versus um, Alice Gurov. No Hamzat Chemaev on this card. And you, it almost seemed like a dead cert that it was going to be Paolo Costa versus Hamza. Dana, a couple of weeks ago, alluded to saying Hamza's got a few personal issues going on. However, Hamza since then has actually come out and says he's ready to fight. He's been training, but he hasn't been given a fight. One, who do you believe? And two, when and where do you see Hamza next fight? Dana, Dana wouldn't lie. He doesn't need to. You know what I mean? He isn't going to need to. He's just getting told what he's told. Maybe then they want the bigger fight. And I think he's holding out for Usman, to be honest with you. Hamza. I think that's the fight he wants. Because if he beats Usman, he gets he gets a title shot. But that's the fight Tomorrow I want to see. Yeah, and I think that's the fight that will happen as well. I think that's what happened. But to pull out of this one is interesting. You know what I mean? But we'll see, mate. We'll see what happens. But it's a shame not to see him because he hasn't been active for a while. We haven't seen him for a while. You know, well, literally so... the last time would have, would have been the Nate Diaz card. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's even just... that, that was just around. Yeah, so we haven't really seen much of him apart from when he fought. Um, who was he fighting? What's Gilbert. his name again? Gilbert. That's it. Yeah, yeah. When he fought Gilbert, so then he wants to come straight back and fight one of these, um, like Usman. You know, Usman's a different level of fighter, man. But that's the fight I want to see. I'd rather see that fight. So, as a fight fan, all right. So just sticking on that fight because again, that's the fight that I really want to see. If they make that fight one eighty five. And Hamza is able to beat Usman. Do you think they give Usman the shot for Leon Edwards at 170? If no, Leon comes through against Colby, I don't think Dana White will let him fight at that weight. To be honest with you, you I don't think? think, think, I, think I, I think in the I swear he said in the last press conference, he says it has to, if he fights Usman, it has to be a middleweight. But then that doesn't make sense because Usman's not a middleweight. I must. I know you what you're saying is absolutely spot on, but it, it just Maybe doesn't I mean, make well, sense. Yeah, no, he said something like that because I think he has to fight him because he had the weight issue. I, I can't remember exactly what it's in the press conference. I'm sure he said middleweight. Maybe he said welterweight. But what, what was what was he weighing when he when he was meant to fight Diaz and he didn't weigh? He came him? in like nine pounds or eight pounds overweight. What, what weight class were they fighting at? Diaz at 170. They were meant to fight, and he hadn't missed weight before that. That was the first time he'd missed no, weight. I think that was what it was because I think well, it was pretty. It wasn't exactly apologetic about it, was it? You know, what I mean? so, um, so I think Dana White said you're doing the old Kelvin Gastelum and he's like, You're fighting at 185 or you're not fighting at all. Simple. Oh, you know? sorry to go back on something. Kelvin yeah. Gastelum versus Joaquin Buckley at 170. Are you in for it? Oh, because Kelvin said he's going back down. 
Kelvin's going to go back down. He's going to let him go back down, is he? <laughs> to be fair, he's he's had him in the gulag for a good, a good a good amount of time now. He's probably letting him out now, saying you've learned your lesson. You better not miss weight, though. Yeah, Gaston will beat him up, unfortunately. You reckon? Gaston will just yeah wrestle him. He'll wrestle him like anything. Gaston's just a solid unit, mate. You know what I mean? Once that guy gets hold of it, and he can take a punch as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah, that'd be a tough fight for Buckley, but a good fight to watch though. But yeah, well, look, I just won't ever forget what he did to Bispin, mate. You know what I mean? So that's what I always think of. You know? Yeah, it hurts. That really hurt that day watching yeah. that. But again, Bisping shouldn't even have been fighting. He he just fight with one eye effectively and going up against these killers. So that speaks on uh, how how tough Bisping is and his mindset as well. Um, just again looking at this card. Derek Lewis is on this card. He's on a real bad fight streak at the moment of losing. Still making main cards though, isn't he? Still makes main cards because he is that guy who could potentially pull off a one-shot knockout as we've seen against Blades and Volkov, etc. Do you think, though, this could potentially be his last fight should he not secure the win? Believe is an animal, mate. I'm telling it's you now. Fight. He's another one of these guys who's up and coming. Yeah, he's and look, Lewis, is, look, Lewis is on a, a losing streak and he's just doing what we were speaking about earlier in the, one of the other fights you know, from last night. He's taking on an opponent, but Derek Lewis don't care. You know what I mean? As long as he's making the right money, he'll do his best and he'll go out there and fight. But it's a shame because we've seen what he could do to people. I think after we saw him drop Curtis Blades, you know what I mean? We thought, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah mate, um, I hope he gets the win, but I think it's a, a downward spiral at the moment, and it's off the Bellator sort of jobby, you know? Oh, you reckon? Yeah, Bellator will lap him up straight away, cause the crowd. But the thing is, Dana White can't keep you forever. You know what I mean? And eventually, you've got to have that conversation. About how, how many has he lost in a row now, Derek Lewis? Um, let me have a look at his record. I'll see if I can pull up his record. I think it's three, maybe. It's not great, though. Like, and and the losses haven't been yeah. good either. So I think his last ten fights or something. So oh, it, I think it might be four actually. Um, I know. So he he fought Cyril Garn and lost. Then he beat Chris Dorcas, but then he lost to Taito Vasa Pavlovich and then Sergey Spivak. So he's lost four in the last five, and the four losses have all been stoppages as well. Yeah, but look at his fought though, as you said. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're like, they're animals, mate. But if you're not if you're not up there with the big boys anymore, you're just gonna be a gatekeeper. And I love yeah. Derek Lewis as well. It's the entertainment value yeah. of him. Yeah, but yeah, I man. The gatekeeper. I'm really biased when it comes to Derek Lewis and openly biased. I he he's he's based I'm I feel like I've got one of those sort of moments where I'll always be attached to him because when he pulled off that that win against Volkov in on the Khabib McGregor card. I was on my honeymoon with my wife and I literally was watching that. And we were in Hawaii. So you know how it is. We watched a card in this country, in London, in the UK, and it's it's three o'clock in the morning it starts. Watching it in Hawaii, I was watching it during the daytime and it felt weird. When he pulled off that knockout, I literally screamed in the hotel, woke up my wife, someone else from like the hallway was came out of their room. I was just like, sorry, Lewis had just won. And people looking at me like, well, who's this who's this idiot from the UK who's coming screaming in a Hawaii hotel? But I, since then, I, I've always just like had that connection to Lewis. And then his post-fight interview was just gold, comedy yeah. gold. But you're right. I, I don't I don't want to see him become a gatekeeper. And I don't think he'd be a great gatekeeper because you know what he brings to the table. He's not going to challenge you in terms of your grappling and you're kicking and, and all these other things, it's going to be, can you avoid getting hit? And if you do get hit, can you eat that punch? And the the, the, the answer to the second question is probably no for any human no. being. But you, you have seen fighters say, well, we can take him down and we can avoid that punch. So this is a big fight for Lewis in his career. And I, I, I think it could be a case of he may walk away should he not get the win. But yeah, I'd love so. him to get the win. Yeah, but me too. I hope he wins. Um, Wonder Boy Thompson taking his fight. Now, the World Weight division is is a bit of a weird division at the moment. You've got Colby and and, and Edwards gonna fight. Usman's ranked number one, but he hasn't got a fight. Colby's got the fight, he's ranked number two. Then you've got Hamzat, 
who's not fighting. Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert have just fought. And you've got Shavkat, who hasn't got a fight either. And then you've got Wonderboy. Wonderboy, unfortunately, couldn't have fought up. Like, there was, there was no one to fight up. However, he's fighting number 15. It's a massive risk for him. Do you think the risk is actually worth it? Because if he wins this fight, his ranking doesn't actually change. And he's no closer no. to a title opportunity. Yeah, is but it's it still win, isn't it? It's true. Yeah, it's yeah man, and you've got, to, you've got to take them. You? Some, some of these guys, they'll just fight anyone, mate. They don't care. Yeah. They're there to get yeah. paid, man. They need the money, you know, and they'll, yeah. they'll win. They'll win that win bonus, you know. But I think it's a great fight. Both similar styles, to be honest with you, from both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So both we have two fighters with a side-on stance, it looks like, in this fight. It's more like watching yeah. a bloody karate fight. You know, so, yeah. I wonder if Pereira goes back to the old Pereira and starts jumping off the cage and doing backflips yeah. and stuff. Not against back. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy does all that shit as well. Yeah, you know what I mean, if he wants to, what yeah. uh, Wonder Boy would do. Wonder Boy is special, mate, and he will pick that geezer apart, mate. You reckon? But, but I reckon it'll be a war. Though. I reckon Wonder Boy would take some damage. Sure. Yeah, I think though, Pereira is a big guy for one seventy as well. He's a yeah, big, that, big guy. Yeah, but Wonder Boy is always a great fight, you know, to watch. But he's not a stupid fighter. He's a technical yeah. fighter. Agreed. And the main event, obviously. Dustin Poirier, the last time he fought Justin Gaethje, he was a war. But he managed to get the stoppage. I think it was the the fourth round or the third round he got the stoppage. This time around, it's for the BMF title. I've got to ask you, what's your thoughts on it being for the BMF title since Masvidal's retired officially now? Do you like yeah, the man. idea? Do you not? Yeah, why, why not, man? Thank all the you. I thought it was just me. Thank you, all, Chris. All, there we go. <laughs> All the fight, all the all the fighters want it, man. They love it. All the fighters want to be the BMF champion yeah. and stuff like that, mate. You watch everyone start trying to fight for that belt now. Then yeah. eventually it will just get eventually a champion will just win it and that'll be there'll be a double belt every time you yeah. win. But, but yeah, I, I think sometimes it's sometimes you don't have to take things so seriously. Sometimes you can just say, Yeah, let's fight and let's put something on the line there. Yeah, mate, for sure. No, I agree. I agree completely. I think why not? You know what I mean? Why not? Like there's there's guys out there who might not be the most technically skilled, but they definitely are poor and gagey, but you know what I mean? Like they're yeah. very them they're, they're brawlers, you know. Yeah. Um, and they are the, and then yeah, let's see who the most the BMF champion is then. Do you know what I mean out of you two? And I think it's a nice one for them to win because people like Gagey and Poirier, like how close do those guys come to winning the UFC title and just never yeah, quite yeah. got there. But at least they get this sort of um they win there, but they beat everyone else. So it's almost like like you're 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 a bad mofo, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you ain't yeah. the champion, but my God, you are a good fighter. You know what I mean? Well, so. If you look at their, their both both their title chances came against <laughs> the same opponent, both against Khabib, both against Oliveira. And they, they both lost in the same fashion. Both both submitted. Like yeah. it's it's really crazy how identical their careers have been in, cer in certain aspects. And again, Gaethje is another one. He said it openly. He said he's going to make one more run for the title. He's not going to he he can't fight the way he fights and be involved in these amazing. Hall of Fame level fights and be around for the next five, ten years. It's just it's impossible. Yeah. But I think people sleep on Poirier. Poirier's in wars virtually all the time. Poirier's my favorite for this fight, for sure. I think he's the technically more sound. It's just whether it's does he still have that hunger in him though? Yeah, I think he does. He's got so close so many times. I think he I think he likes to have another run of it, a run at it as well, but He's got another crazy Dagestani standing in front of him, you know. And well, this is the thing, it's just, yeah. It's just one of them things, isn't it? You know, like I don't think he beats Makachev. You know, I don't you think he. Don't. I don't think he beats. No, I don't think he beats him. I think Poirier, unfortunately, these new, this is this is like the new breed of fighters coming through, mate. And you know, we're slowly. Oh well, you can disagree. That's fine. I, I, but yeah, I, I but, but I, I don't think Poirier beats anyone else. Well, he might, maybe he does, but. I don't know. I like Poirier a lot. He's he's come a long way since the McGregor fight yeah. where he lost, which everyone remembers him for. They think, oh, he must yeah. be shit because you know yeah. McGregor beat him up. <laughs> far from it. Um, far from it. Yeah. But technically, yeah. yeah, he's a lot better than what's Makachev's fought already. But um, I just I don't know what it is, mate. Poirier just he just always falls short, mate. Always falls short. And Makachev is going to be the champion forever, mate. He's going to beat Volkanovski as well. Which, whichever way, whichever way he goes up, sort of old club score, he's going to go up, isn't he? Leon I, or I'll be honest, down, I, I don't, don't think he beats Leon. No, he doesn't beat Leon. that extra weight. Leon just picked yeah. up part, but um, yeah, Leon's but yeah, too, but, too rangy for him as well. Yeah, but especially after seeing his last fight against Usman with his takedown defense yeah. and everything, and so Leon's, Usman, class, was, man. Leon's absolutely that was just incredible. But yeah, mate, it'd be a great fight. Um, I'd like to see Gagey win it. 
because then we opens up a trilogy. You know what I mean? Which is always nice. It was like a trilogy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I'd like to see Gagey win and go fight Makachev. It won't end well, unfortunately. Yeah. And then, you know, Poirier has his <laughs> chance. But Poirier's running out of people to fight, man. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I actually think Poirier beats Gaethje and I think Poirier has got the best chance of being Makachev with him being Southpaw as well. Makachev for me showed that he he's not he's just not as good as Khabib and look that doesn't mean you're you're rubbish because Khabib was a generational fighter but I think Volkanovski's removed some of that invincibility. It almost reminds me of when Shogun fought Machida the first time and everyone was like in this trance that Machida couldn't be beat, couldn't be touched and Shogun showed that he was human, didn't get the result that he wanted, but he showed he was human. And then the second time, he just ran through him. I don't think anyone's going to run through Makachev, but I do think he's he can be beaten. I, I think that air of invincibility has been taken away by Volkanovski. And I think the likes of Poirier and, and Gaethje will look at him and say, yeah, he's going to be a hell of a tough fight, but he's beatable now. He's not Khabib. Like, yeah, I just, let's I get just out see him learning. I just see him learning from all that. I see their training camp, right? Like, Blau Mohammed was talking about it on a podcast, the training yeah. camp down at Khabib's and stuff. And I know if you're tired, yeah, Khabib will take your phone off you, mate. He'll take your phone off you and keep it, and you can have it back like 24 hours' time because you're obviously spending too long on your phone. Yeah, mate. Wow. What, watch Blau Mohammed on Rogan's podcast, mate. Honestly, he talks about the training down there. And it's Goodness. And, it, and, and to them, they don't even want to lose a round in sparring, wrestling and stuff, let alone in a ring and cage. Yeah, so yeah, mate, it's it's ruthless down there, man. They, they, they just want to win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, fair win. enough. Fair you know enough. I mean? so, that gym, mate, is um, ruthless. I'm sure Khabib would have had something to say about all that. But again, Khabib wasn't did look totally unbeatable either. So yeah, man, it's just an interesting one at the moment. You got people like all these legends we had which are unbeatable, like Jones and Khabib and stuff. So who yeah. knows? You know, it's all just phasing out slowly now. You know, the new it. eras. Yeah, mate, the new breeds coming in and. It's so fun. many of them coming as well. But yeah, Contender Series is great. Got loads of people coming through from that. And yeah, man, it's a good place in the UFC at the moment, for sure. Loving it indeed. Well, people, that is another episode in the books for you. If you haven't already, please do smash the like button and subscribe. Chris, where can the people find you to support you, please? Um, just on my name, it says no, Chris Allen M. May on all platforms. Um, Check out Blood Bloodline Fight Series. It's my new fight show I'm putting on at the moment in the UK, just a regional show. Check it out. Videos are online to watch. And yeah, check us out on here every Sunday. Amazing, amazing. My name is Callum Sanderson. Again, just click here. You can see me on all the social media. Shout out to Colin. Couldn't be with us on this show, but he will be back next week to find Colin. Just search Colin Crandall on Twitter and you'll be able to find him there. The Power Hour on a Tuesday as well, which is a great show on Twitter Spaces where he often interviews fighters and ex-fighters as well. So make sure you look out for him there. People, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Until we see you next week, have a great one. Take care.